check those beads out. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to tackle a question that I've been curious about and I also asked the guys at Hughes Detailing and then I also asked the guys at Gion. So Gion and also the guys at Hughes Detailing recommended it to use a product where you could kind of reset the coating. And what I mean by resetting the coating is not like get rid of the coating, but it's more like um, make it bare again because a lot of times for me, I like using a drying aid. And a drying aid all the time adds a layer of protectant on it. After a while, it gets oversaturated and that's when you lose the hydrophobic properties as it was once was when you put it on the car. So today we're gonna to be using something that's very safe for ceramic coated vehicles and also PPF. And that's gonna be their restart wash. Smell test, it, it, it's iron based um, removal. So any iron contaminants that are on the vehicle, um, this is gonna help eat it away. This does not smell good. So it smells like rotten eggs, but that's not the purpose of how it smells. The purpose is how it works. So we're gonna tackle that. We're in my garage again, and I do have something that I'm gonna show you guys later on on how I get rid of all this water. Um, I moved the car a little bit further towards uh, the edge of the garage, so we're not getting close to the wall. And also I'm a little bit further away from uh, the fuse box right across. The only thing that's gonna be wet is pretty much on the floor. And if you use the proper techniques, you're not gonna have any problems. So once we're done with that, we're gonna use one of my favorite products, which is gonna be uh, the wet coat. Wet coat is a water activated product. You just spray it on, hose it off, and then you dry the car. And that's gonna be something that if you guys are looking for an extra layer of protection, we'll get into this later on. So off camera, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill this up into my bucket. Um, based on the instructions, you're gonna need about uh, 15 to 20 milliliters into a 10 to 15 liter bucket. Um, I'm definitely gonna eyeball it. If you wanna be precise, you can get the measuring tools out. And then I believe it's one ounce for 500 milliliters in my foam cannon. Um, we're gonna foam it up, get this car washed, but we're also gonna wash the wheels, but I'm gonna skip through the wheels and we'll tune in with you guys when we get to uh, the main wash. So I just basically filled up the bucket with some soap and I could tell it smells a little bit. This is supposed to help um, amplify the hydrophobic properties in the ceramic coating that you've applied before in the past. Um, I'll probably do this maybe like every six months. I'm not gonna do it all the time. Um, this is a little higher pH um, level. And if you guys know pH levels, pH neutral is more like it's safe for coatings. This is just a little elevated. Again, this is gonna help um, amplify the ceramic coating once again. In all honesty, it kind of smells like a grapefruit. That's what it smells like to me. Pour the rest of the soap in here, which really wasn't much anyway left. So I definitely want to thank the team over at Gion for giving me all these products. Throughout the next couple wash videos, you're going to see multiple different products I'm using. I definitely want to thank them for giving me this smoothie mitt. Um, all my other mitts are actually dirty from the last wash video I did with John and also Ben. but. Touching this right now, it's very soft, and we're gonna use it. It's nice, thick type of padding, so you can definitely tell this is quality. We're still gonna use the two-bucket method. And obviously, we're gonna start from the top. What I do like about this soap is that it goes on pretty thick. It went on like shaving cream. Um, what I will say, though, this soap, it smells very strong, concentrated, but when you spray it on, it smells like it smells like a grapefruit, kind of. I don't know, if you guys have used this product before, let me know what you guys think. But it kind of smells like a grapefruit. Like it's bitter and kind of sweet a little bit. Yeah, this is a nice mint. And 
Again, you don't need to do this every single wash and it's not suggested to do every single wash. This is more something like you would do um, every six months. You could do it every quarterly, depends on how much you drive. Again, this is not my daily driver. This is a car I take out on the weekends and also the car events. So I don't really use this way too often. But if you were doing this here daily, maybe you could do it every quarterly. And then when we apply the wet coat, it's gonna be a product that I used um, way before uh, when I had my uh, FADM3. And what's so good about this, it's good to add another layer of protection on your car because over time, you want, it, you want the longevity of the ceramic coating you have and you want the longevity of everything you have on the car, you know, the protectants and everything because you paid a lot of money for it. Why not add another layer of protection? And what's so good about my car is that if you guys haven't seen, you know, obviously the car is fully PPF and it makes it so much easier to wash because I'm not having to worry about swirl marks or anything like that because that's what the PPF is for, is to prevent that from happening. But I'm obviously still gonna take the proper precautions. I'm still gonna dip the mitt into the, the rinse bucket as much as possible. What I'm really curious about is how the wet coat's gonna react to my ceramic coating from Modesta and also the PPF. You know, I obviously had it on my F80 and it did a good job, but that car was not ceramic coated and that car was not fully PPF. It was partially, just the front clip. So last time we had John and Ben over, we had a good time. We had an amazing time. Uh, these guys were hilarious. Um, majority of the time of the wash and they were, they were the first ones to be on the episode. And it was a lot of joking around back and forth. Um, they were a great guest to have in the first two episodes. I told them they're welcome to come back again if they want to drive another three hours to wash the car. But um, yesterday was actually Thanksgiving, so I'm not sure when you guys are seeing this video. Um, happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Happy belated Thanksgiving. The next major holiday for myself is going to be Christmas. So if I, in case you don't see this video by then, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and a happy new year. And then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna give you guys some more information about this product um, and why this may be something for you to use on your ceramic coated car. Let me grab you guys onto this side. But I've been wanting to do something like this because my go-to, I guess, drying aid right now has been bead maker. They actually sent me over at Gion a ceramic uh, detailer that could be used as a drying aid. I'm not gonna use it today because we're gonna be using wet coat and wet coat is gonna be doing a lot more protecting than that. And I can already see that the ceramic coating is being a little bit more amplified. Only reason because um, before when I was soaping up the car, you wouldn't see the tight beads. So I'm really curious the results after this. And I'm gonna tell you guys exactly what I see and notice. Um, as of right now, it's a nice slick feeling to it. Um, it. It still hasn't hurt the ceramic coating because I can still see the soap being fought off. Again, these are free for, this is a product for you guys if you guys use a lot of drying aids and stuff. But um, this also helps remove some of the tree sap um, iron uh, deposits, um, especially if you park near a train station or if you're near a rail yard, a lot of those things, a lot of those iron composites, deposits gets into the air and it kind of gets saturated onto your paint. And that's when you start feeling a lot of the roughness. Where you should probably do a little bit more attention is gonna be towards the rear and also the top portions of the car. That's where the, it lands the iron and, and gets bonded with your paint or PPF or ceramic coating. But back here is probably one of the dirtiest portions of the car. So you should probably do this towards the last. Uh, what I will say though is, luckily for me, I don't feel much. 
I do feel some things here and there, like on the paint. And that's all from driving. Um, it gets kicked up and it gets bonded onto the PPF and ceramic coating. So besides that, we just launched our tickets for the invasion of Orlando. And within the first day, there was a little hiccup. There was a lot of people waiting to purchase their tickets and also apply for indoor VIP. And let's just say a lot of people were on that um, website and it kind of made things delayed because it was oversaturated with um, traffic on that website. So we launched the tickets. There's a panel reviewing uh, the car show entries. And as of right now, um, people are getting approved, but they're doing only 10 a week. Um, it's from our panel. And right now, I think we have about 10 approved as of right now, but there's a lot of people coming from all across the world. And the reason why I say world is because we literally have people coming from like Canada, which is crazy, especially during that time because who knows how bad the weather's gonna be. But it just shows the dedication of the BMW community. It also showcases um, what our events do. They bring out some of the best qualities out there in people and also the builds. Let me take you guys a little closer. Check this out. These beads are so much tighter. I haven't seen beads like this probably in the past couple weeks because after a while when you put too much drying aid, it oversaturates the area. At that point, it becomes less hydrophobic and the water doesn't beat up. It doesn't slick off. I'm not saying it doesn't, but it's gonna amplify it once you do the restart wash, which as you can see right now, this is pretty amazing. So it did a wonderful job in getting this back to where it should be. And then in a little bit, we're gonna be using um, the wet coat and just amplify this a lot more, add another layer of protection. And then to be honest, I might do this every quarterly, even though I don't drive this car often, but I do wash it weekly and I do use a lot of the drying aid. So again, this might be a, a wash that I may do quarterly. All right, so right now we're gonna be using Gion wet coat. Again, I talked about this a lot. This is definitely one of my favorite products from them, and I've mentioned it to other people. I know you saw in the 440i video, what we did was we had a, my mother-in-law's 440i, and we used, we used Sonax Spray and Seal. This is very similar, but I think this is on a different level. You don't need a lot for this product. I'm misting each panel, and again, this is just gonna amplify the protection on the car. And this is a product you use when it's wet. You don't want to use this product when it's dry. And you also don't want to use it when it's, um, your car is hot. Because that's just going to make it not bond correctly. And it's going to be a little more difficult to take off. What I will say though, this doesn't have a great smell like the Sonex spray and seal. But again, this is something that you want to use to protect your car. But again, if it smells good, it'll be, a, it'll be a plus. And that's just my person, person uh, preference. And I'm also gonna spray some wet coat on the wheels to make it a little bit easier to wash as we uh, continue with these annoying wheels. I'll probably do about three sprays on each wheel. And you don't wanna let it sit. So once you're done spraying it on, you're gonna wanna hose it off because you don't want it to dry. If you, if you allow it to dry, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to take off. So you do want to be thorough on rinsing this because um, I've had products like this where it's a water activated product and long story short, it got very difficult to take off, especially when it's a hot summer day. Um, long story short, I had to wash the car again, which is obviously you don't want to do it right after you um, protected the car and washed it. Why it's another good thing to have a pressure washer. So. Again, the pressure washer I'm using is a Active 2.0. 
It's been one of the best pressure washers I've used, and it's something that's not gonna break the bank when you uh, purchase one. All right, let's check everything out. So as you can see, it's a little bit more mistier and tighter for the beads. This is, like I said, it's gonna add another layer of protection. It's gonna add a couple more months of protection, and it's gonna be AKA the sacrificial layer. So in a little bit, you may think this is a mess, and the water only comes up to here, you know? So there's decent amount of water here, but I end up buying a uh, concrete squeegee right over here, and this is gonna help me clean it up. So once I drive the car and pull the car out, we're gonna show you how this works, and it does a great job of getting rid of all this water. All right, as you can see here, it looks like a mess. It looks like there's water here, stagnant water. This is a squeegee, concrete squeegee you can pick up on Amazon. And this is gonna help me. And a lot of this is from John and Ben when they were over here last time. All that dirt. All right, so as you can see, most of the water is all gone. Just a couple streaks on the floor. I think the squeegee did an amazing job. Um, you definitely want to park the car a little closer to the edge, like right over in this area, and you want to be mindful where you spray the water. But again, this is doable. It's just concrete floor. Um, when you drive the car in the rain, you normally uh, come into the garage wet, so it's just the same thing. Um, it's not too bad. It's another step where you can just squeegee the water out, and it does a really good job. I'll list everything that I used in this video in the description, and we'll go inside and touch base with this final thoughts about this product. All right, so final thoughts about the product. I think it did an amazing job. I, it's gonna be something I'm gonna use probably every quarterly. Uh, it also depends on how much drying aid I use. So like I said, drying aid, after time, it oversaturates the paint in the surface. And at that point, you should probably strip it to really amplify the hydrophobic properties and also what the ceramic coating is made to do. So I definitely wanna thank the team over at Gion for sending me all these products. It's gonna help me uh, amplify my uh, washing experience and also give you guys some really important information because I know you guys are just trying to maintain your cars to the highest to degree. And um, definitely this is one of the products I highly recommend. Again, you'll notice the difference once you use this um, every quarterly, um, if not every six months. Um, but I have so much more products in that box to test out. So you saw a little bit here and there. Um, I wanna thank them again. We have a whole bunch of Weagle products that I'm gonna use in a future video. I don't wanna oversaturate this video with too many different products because at that point, you'll get too much out of hand. You're not gonna understand which product we're gonna be using. And I wanted to save some of the special stuff for, for later on. Stay tuned, I got a lot more content with this. And maybe in a future uh, wash cast, we'll get some more products into the wash cast and kind of explain with that. Um, again, I want to thank the team over, over there again. They've been so much helpful. And they're also going to be at the Invasion of Orlando in February 18, 2023. So we're definitely excited to have them there. I think it's going to be such a great time. And other than that, I'll see you guys on the next video. <coughs>